Hi, let's discuss about uh, the antibody structure and classes. And we want to discuss about the functions of antibody for a protection from uh, antigens, which is non-self or foreign. So what are the antibodies? Antibody is a specialized protein. You remember proteins uh, uh, that can inactivate pathogens directly or mark them for destruction by other immune elements. Uh, so antibody is a very interesting protein and very important. And that looks like a Y shape. Let me show you its structure. So antibody looks like a Y shape. And that tip of this uh, finger is where antigen is binding site. So you can consider it as the antigen as a foreign which is recognizable by antibody and the relationship for this connection is like key and lock structure. So look at this. Uh, so, so what is this antigen? So antigen is a substance can, that can be recognized by antibody or immune cell receptor. So you can ge geometrically consider this antigen like this. Let me show you more general way of this antigen, which is a yellow, you know, the pathogens or anything that has a shape which is uh, not uh, non-self or foreign. So we have our own antibody, very diverse antibody system, which specific, specifically fits into this special shape of this antigen. So, so we should have lots of antibodies which do not necessarily recognize our own molecule, but the foreign molecule. And, and this even one antigen, <clears throat> you can see there could be a lot different kinds of uh, shapes and positions which, which is recognizable. So that we call the part of antigen that's recognized by our immune system is called epitope. Epi means a surface. So it's on the surface and this is determining. So the part of antigen molecule to which an antibody attaches, that is also called antigenic determinant, okay? Because we are determining this antigen by our antibody. So let's go through a little bit of the definitions of antigens and antibodies. So antigen, is a target to which an antibody binds. And what can become antigen? It can be a protein from foreign molecule or polysaccharide or small molecule. And antigen thus can be associated with external bacteria or virus, or even let's say I need a kidney transplant from another person, that transplanted organ is now you know, it's, it's a foreign, so it can be considered as an antigen. Or whatever entity that is a foreign to the host is called antigen. So that specific molecule which our immune system produces is an antibody, and the shape is related to a kind of globular protein. So that's why we call antibody, in other words, called immunoglobulins, uh, or simply write the Ig. So the reason is antibodies are a globular plasma protein, which is produced in response to encountering a specific antigen. You see, I put a specific. Specificity is a very, very um, important characteristic of antibody. So when an antigen enters our host, our body, that antigen will stimulate our immune system, often leading to the production of specific antibody molecule, which can bind to that specific antigen. So which is done by uh, the antibody production is done by a plasma cells or antibody producing cell. And that plasma cell is matured from B cells. And you can wonder where comes the B from. The origin of the B is from bursa, which is from a, um, a birds, uh, we found out the, that a specific sac, there's a lot of B cells. And the B cells are originated from bone marrow. So that's how I remember. So bone marrow 
as where B cells originate, a kind of circulating white blood cell is a. So um, that antibody, if the antibody is produced by a single clone of cell or cell line, then the antibody will be completely identical. And that identical antibody we call as a monoclonal antibodies or simply MABs. So MABs should bind to the same epitope. So because it's totally identical antibody molecule. So let's get into a little more specific into the structure of antibody. So antibody should have a site which recognize antigen and binding. So it has a pocket. So typical antibody has a two arms so that it has a, uh, a bivalence, okay? So uh, it looks like this. So it's a Y shape. You can see there's a, like four chains, two are short. So we, uh, in, in terms of mass, we call light chain, two are long, which is heavy chain. Mm -hmm. And you see that binding sites are the two tips. So that's we call antigen binding site, which is composed of both light and heavy chain. And that part has to be a very, very diverse to uh, figure out all the invading outside of the world. So it, it, it has a huge variability. We call hyper variable, okay? So that's a variable reason why the rest do not have to be different. So the rest should be constant. So we call it a constant reason. All right, so that variable reason of each chain should contain hyper variable reason or we call CDR or because it, it attaches to antigen like a, a comple complementary a match. So we call it a complementary determining reasons or CDRs. So this CDR form a three dimensional structure to bind to specific antigen. Okay. So this Y shape is just a conceptual uh, weight, but the reality looks a little more complicated. So you can see this tip of this uh, region, this two part and then the body part. And so for study this, we have to chop out so we can see it as a fragment. So we name it as a, this, uh, uh, constant reason as a, uh, uh, we, we use a F stands for the fragment. So there are two fragments. One should be that antigen binding site. So, so we put it FAB, meaning antigen binding site fragment, while the rest constant as a constant fragment region or FC region. So you can see that this light chain is about 24 kilodalton and the heavy chains are about, about 50 kilodalton. So both you combine this total about 70 to 80 and there are two. So we have antibody like this has about 150 kilodalton, which is a quite big macromolecule. And you can see here, uh, this uh, blue is a uh, uh, heavy chain. And the red is a uh, light chain. And you can see this yellow is also a heavy chain. You see this variable region, so V from the light chain, V from the heavy chain. And the C stands for the uh, constant region from light chain and heavy uh, constant region. This H stands for hinge because it's kind of flexible. It has flexibilities. So let's discuss about the kinds of immunoglobulin or antibodies. There you can see IgA, D, E, G, M. There are so many, but you only need to know a couple of them. So the concept of uh, this antibody, let's say um, we have to define two terms called affinity versus avidity. So this is originated from biochemistry. First, because antibody grabs the antigen. So this chemical uh, interaction like protein ligand binding, the strength of this is called affinity, okay? Um, affinity. And uh, let me go back to the shape kinds of antibodies. So there is a single Y shape, that's a monomer, called IgD, E, G, 
belongs to this. But there are two antibodies bound together, so that's a dimer, uh, typical of IgA. And uh, there are even pentamer, like five antibodies put together, uh, which is IgM. So in this case, you see bivalence, but IgA case, there's a four pockets. So, you know, once it recognizes antigen, it may combine to, to bind it. So that combined strength of multiple affinities of individual nodes. So we can consider the avidity can be influenced by both affinity, which is a strength of a single interaction, and also the number of these arms or the valence of the interaction. So number of interacting binding sites. So antibody classes, or we call isotopes, and its role can be uh, named as Ig, stands for immunoglobulin. And uh, there are a number of types. Uh, I think you only need to know about these uh, num uh, like three. So the first is uh, majority of antibody-based immunity against invading pathogens are given by IgG. So, um, so that forms as a memory function and the most abundant in our blood plasma. And the second is uh, mostly secreting uh, uh, part is found in mucosal area. There are lots of Ig, these dimers or IgA, and that uh, provides a mucosal immunity. And uh, there are like initial pentamer shape of IgM, which is existing on the surface of the B cells, and it is secreted as a pentameric form. So it has a lot of these valencies. So what it means is with uh, this IgM has a very high avidity. So, so that I think it's, it's good to know. And IgE is related to about the allergic reaction and IgD is still not known much for its uh, function. So one question here is how does the mom provide immune, immune protection for the baby? Because the baby's immune system is immature. So the first thing is the mom's IgG, which is the uh, monomer, IgG uh, can pass through across the blood placenta barrier so that the mom's antibody IgG can get into a uh, baby's uh, circulation. It provides a, um, a immunity. And after, right after birth, the mom gives a uh, um, breast milk. So breast milk is also secretion. So it contains a lot of this dimer or IgAs and that get into the baby's uh, uh, mouth to gastrointestinal system. So it codes and it provides a, uh, an immunity uh, because IgA will block lots of this uh, bacteria or uh, an outside pathogens. So that's how uh, the, why breast milk breastfeeding is probably important for providing more immunity to the baby at, at an early age. So here is a reference that uh, antibody structure, more uh, detailed uh, figures are here. So you can notice that heavy light chains are all connected with disulfide bridge or disulfide bonding. And IgM, IgG, Ig, IgED, uh, its shape you can take a look and they have a molecular weights are different. So the smallest ones are IgG that can pass through the placenta to the baby. And you see that in serum, uh, the IgG has the most abundant, uh, uh, is the most abundant antibody. So main blood antibody, which neutralizes toxins and opsonization for uh, EG uptake by phagocytosis. While IgA is secreted into mucus, tears and saliva, and allergy of a uh, related antibody is a IgE. So uh, I want to uh, discuss about uh, some terminologies when we talk about functions of antibodies. 
So the first is opsonize. So opsonize means make a foreign cell more susceptible to phagocytosis. So the antibody uh, covers this foreign cell so that it's kind of putting a source on the external material so that our own cell eating cell, such as macrophage, recognize and can phagocytose. And agglutinate is the uh, antibody is uh, stuck together to form a mess for, uh, for the in external pathogens. So here's the, the diagram, protective mechanism of binding uh, antibodies to antigen. So agglutination means that you can see antibody has a multiple valence. So you can grab double bacteria or multiple bacteria together, which enhances phagocytosis and also reduces the number of infectious units to be dealt with. And the second is opsonization by coding or putting a source onto antigen so that enhance uh, phagocytosis by phagocyte cells. And antibody directly interacts to toxins or virus or bacterium so that it can neutralize that the bacteria and virus cannot uh, affect or enter into our host um, cells. So blocks active sites of toxin. And the other is related to an innate immunity that we have in, in our blood plasma. There is a so-called complement system, which is a tiny C1 to C9, which when it triggers, uh, uh, so it, when it recognizes the bacteria is um, attached by antibody, then those uh, fragments, constant fragments, multiple fragments are, are triggering our complement system. So they basically get into the bacterial cell wall and make a pore. So that it ruptures and lies the bacterium. So that's uh, what antibody does to activate this complement system. And, and this lysis makes the internal content of bacteria to rupture and come out. So that will cause an inflammation. So uh, these will um, trigger our immune cells uh, to be activated and causes uh, inflammation. And as the last one is the so-called antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity, or we, we call it sometimes ADCC. What it means is um, some of the target cells when antibody attaching to them will actually cause our immune cells, uh, our immune system recognize and kill the cell. So for example, we already heard about Herceptin, uh, the anti-HER2 antibody as a treatment because some breast cancer cells have an overexpression of HER2, human epidermal growth factor receptor 2. And sometimes you want to understand how this HER2 antibody uh, leads to the treatment or killing of breast cancer cells, which overexpresses HER2. So in some study, uh, there shows it antibody doesn't really uh, reduce or block the HER2 based signaling. And but still it is effective. So uh, an, uh, some studies suggest that this is maybe caused by this antibody dependent cell cytotoxicity because this HER2 antibody uh, such as uh, Herceptin or Trastuzumab uh, will attach to HER2 overexpressed um, receptors of uh, breast cancer cells. Our immune cells recognize it and trigger cell mediated cytotoxicity. So that could be a, a very important mechanism of uh, antibody based treatment, very specific treatment. So now let's uh, summarize this. So antibodies bind to toxin or pathogens so that preventing them from binding to receptors on our host cells and entering. So that we call it neutralizes. And another aspect is to activate effector cells. So what are effector cells? <clears throat> effector cells are the cells that actively respond to a stimulus 
and effect some change, such as a plasma cell is an effector B cell, because once B cell is activated, the, the, the cell has to produce a lot of antibody, and those antibody producing cells are plasma cells. And there are effector T cells, that's a uh, T cell that is actively responds to a stimulus or mast cell. So um, antibody binds to pathogens and link them together. And, and, and that we call agglutination and, um, and coat. And these coated antibody will stimulate our effector cells to recognize their fragment which region? Because antibody binds to this pathogen with the uh, antigen binding site, the, the remaining part is constant region or constant fragment. So this is FC, constant fragment is recognized by the effector cells. So for example, phagocyte will phagocyte, uh, so will phagocyte uh, these cells or mast cell or, or neutrophils and these cells will recognize it and degranulate so it, uh, and, um, and, and giving uh, cytokines to. Also natural killer cells release cytokines and cytotoxic molecules to kill those cells. So the final ones, as I mentioned, that look at this uh, cell membrane, there's a C1 to C9, a nice pore is made to lyse the cell or bacterium. So this is a function of antibody because when uh, antibody coats these uh, external bacteria, uh, it activates complement. The name comes from it is complementary to our immune system. So these antigen antibody complexes activate this complement system, and that is part of our innate immune system, which means it, it's not that specific. Okay, so it complements the ability of antibodies and phagocytes to clear the pathogens. So next time we will study about how to manufacture monoclonal antibodies and monoclonal and polyclonal antibodies and how to make it. Uh, thank you for your attention.